Hey guys, my name's Aaron Massey. Today's project is a viewer suggestion and it's how to build a DIY industrial pipe shelf like the one you see behind me. To get started, let's take a look at some of the pieces we're gonna need for this build. First, I've got this great old piece of reclaimed barn wood. Uh, I've had this for quite a while and it's just been sitting around, so I'm gonna use it. What I really like about this piece is that it has the old rough sawn lines in it and it's got a little bit of a live edge on both sides. It's about one inch thick and it's gonna look great with our industrial black pipe to offset it. So that's the first thing that I've got. Next, let's take a look at the pieces of piping that we're gonna need. I'm making this shelf out of three quarter inch black pipe. Now, you could use half inch pipe if you wanted to. I like three quarter inch because it's a little bit thicker and it makes the shelf look a little bit bulkier. You could use the half inch, which is a little bit cheaper. I recommend using black pipe instead of galvanized pipe because it's a lot cheaper. And if you choose to paint it, it's a lot easier to paint. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start mocking out the layout of our shelf. Again, what's cool about using the black pipe is you can lay out any design and build the shelf however you want. And it could be as big as you want, just depends on how much money you wanna spend, how much material that you have. So this will be our basic layout of our shelf. We'll have a top shelf here and a lower shelf down here. These flanges will extend the shelf away from the wall a little bit with these spacers. And then we can put our shelf, our pieces of wood right here on the top. With the black pipe laid out, now we can take some measurements and transfer those measurements to our shelf. For this shelf, we're gonna have two equally sized shelves, one on the top and one in the bottom. And each one is gonna be about 16 and a half inches long. So we're gonna cut our reclaimed wood into two pieces, 16 and a half inches long, and then we'll start laying out where the holes need to go. I'm measuring how far the center of the pipe is from where the wall will be so that I know that my shelf doesn't stick out too far in the back, which is about uh, four and five eighths. I went four and a quarter inches in from the back here and kind of eyeballed it based on the curve here. It doesn't have to be exact. I just want to make sure that I don't run into any issues the shelf sticking farther back than the space that I have here, which is about four and five eighths. Next, I'm marking the center point in the two circles I traced and using a 7 8 Forstner bit, which is slightly wider than our pipe's diameter, I drill them out. With the holes drilled, I can slide the wood over the pipe and assemble the top shelf. Now we just gotta do the same thing with our bottom shelf. And we got our construction complete. So I want this to be the top side because it has the better saw marks on it and I like the edging to face upward. As you can see, neither one of these sides is straight. Both kind of have a bend to them. There's a little bit of live edge going on on both sides. So it's just a matter of choosing which side you want to be the front of your shelf and which side you want to be the back of your shelf when you're doing this. You could, if you wanted to, you could rip this and cut a straight line so that it sits flush against the shelf. There's no real need for me to do that. So I'm going about four and a quarter so that it gets close to the wall without touching. Hey! Son of a... Why'd I tighten it so much? Oh. There we go. So this is kind of what we're dealing with here. So I want to come in about four and a quarter inches. The shelf is wavy and wonky anyway, so it's not like it really matters as far as where you put it. You can kind of just eyeball it and put it wherever you want. There's a slight overhang for each shelf on each side, so I want to eyeball that they're roughly the same on both ends here. So I'm just tracing it out. Now I've got my two marks here, so then I can just mark kind of the center point of those. What I'm going to try to do this time better than I did the last time, I'm going to try to drill the holes through only so that the Forstner bit pops through just a little bit on the one side. And then I'm gonna flip it over, drill it from the other side so that I can hopefully get rid of the tear out. Now, if you don't have Forstner bits, you can also use a paddle bit, a spade bit. Just keep in mind that you want the hole that you drill to be slightly wider than the pipe that you're using. So if you're using half inch pipe, use a 5 8 bit or something slightly larger so that you're not fighting trying to get it into, into the hole. Boom, that's it. There's your step down shelf right there. That's how it's gonna be. 
Uh, so now, now that it's all assembled, all that we need to do is focus on finishing it. And how you finish it is up to you. You can uh, choose to leave the wood raw like it is, or you can leave the whole thing raw like it is, or you could kind of sand it and uh, stain it and do whatever you want. And you could also paint the pipe if you want, which uh, is a little bit more work because you got to clean the pipe and do all that type of stuff and get it ready for paint. But it's up to you. So in my case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sand it a little bit and keep it rough, but also make it a little bit smooth. And then I'm going to seal it with some polyurethane to bring out the color. One of the things to keep in mind when you're building a heavier shelf like this is to keep in mind where the studs are in your wall. Studs run every 16 inches on center in most instances when things are done correctly. So you want to make sure that at least one or several of your flanges line up with a stud in the wall so that you can carry the weight of the shelf. Now if you can't hit a stud, it's not the end of the world. You could use some expanding drywall anchors to put this thing up later, but it's always best to err on the side of trying to hit a stud if you can, especially since this shelf has a little bit of weight already just in the weight of the shelf itself before you even put anything on it. So try and hit a stud when you mount this thing as best you can. Well guys, here it is, the finished industrial step-down shelf. It's a simple project you can knock out in a couple hours with very minimal tools, and it's a really cool accent you can add to any room. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and leave a comment down below and let me know. Also, I'll have a companion piece for this video up on my blog at mrfixitdiy.com. You can check that out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I call this bench the poor man's workbench because it can be made for about $75 out of a single sheet of plywood and some 2x4s and 4x4s. The overall dimensions of the bench are 72 inches long by 24 inches wide by 36 inches high.